Good afternoon. I wanted to share with you some more updates uh, today. It has and been and will continue to be all hands on deck. Every department, technology and food service, our business office, athletics, our pupil services team, transportation, instructional and support staff, and especially our buildings and grounds team are working together to stay up to date, to clean and disinfect, and to deploy further mitigation strategies. Hats off to Mr. Dave Hatchell and his team. The first update I would like to share is that our district applied for and in less than 24 hours received a waiver from the State Education Department that will allow us to help bridge the gap and offer meals to our families with greater nutritional needs should we need to close for a prolonged period of time. Hats off to Mrs. Cora Harvey, our business administrator, and Mrs. Casey Morse, our food service director, for tackling this waiver the minute it came out yesterday. Our amazing people services team met with Dr. John Fania this morning. We continued to talk about the virus and what it means for our students and families. We also focused in on how to support our students with mental health needs, especially those kids who may have anxiety. We are following the CDC's recommended mitigation strategies and that was shared with us from our, from our local public health department. This provides recommendations for preparedness and for when things become what's called moderate and substantial. There are three categories or levels that the CDC is recommending mitigation strategies for. The first is minimal. Minimal is defined as evidence of isolated cases or limited community transmission. The next level is moderate. Moderate is defined as widespread and or sustained transmission with a high likelihood or confirmed exposure within communal settings like schools. The final level is substantial. Substantial is defined as large scale community transmission with healthcare staff being significantly impacted and there are multiple cases in communal settings. We've identified all students who may have compromised immune systems. We will soon be reaching out to recommend that these families work with their primary care physicians and other specialists to make decisions about ongoing attendance should our county or school move and become more moderate or substantial. I met with our administrative team today to begin planning on reducing the times of large gatherings of students in our buildings during the school day. Times like the start of the school day, lunch, and recess. Those plans will be reviewed and implemented early next week. Our PE department is moving to non-contact activities and will also focus on learning uh, more about physical ed, education, and health. We have turned off most of our water fountains. Our filling stations are still open and we are working on making sure students without water bottles have what they need to use those filling stations. We are providing classroom tools to disinfect shared items like Chromebooks and laptops, iPads, and interactive displays. We have instructed staff to limit the sharing of supplies and to disinfect those supplies that are shared. We are canceling events that draw larger crowds I will be considering limiting non-school related public access and the use of our facilities. In the event of a long closure, we are preparing for educational opportunities that will help students review or maintain skills. There will be both paper-based and online options. Hats off to Mrs. Lisa Parsons, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, and Mrs. Rayanne Thomas, who have really taken the lead on getting this set up should we have a prolonged closure. It is now time to graciously ask what our community can do to partner with the district to help mitigate risk and keep us from moving to a moderate or substantial level. I respectfully ask that you not visit our buildings if you are sick and not feeling well. I respectfully ask that you understand as we begin to limit the outside public use of our facilities.
if you have an illness that may categorize you as immune compromised, to keep yourself safe, I respectfully ask that you think before exposing yourself to unwarranted risk by coming into one of our buildings. I respectfully ask that if your child has a fever, that you keep them home and not have them return to school until they have not presented with a fever without the use of a fever reducing medicine for at least 24 hours. I respectfully ask that you consider keeping your child home who may present with severe respiratory symptoms, symptoms such as excessive coughing, nasal decongestion, shortness of breath, even if they don't present with a fever. The state continues to update us and provide us with guidance. I will share that as I get that information. Most recently is guidance allowing us to worry less about student attendance. On a side note, there are many rumors out there. Please know that I will use all the communication tools that you're used to and that are available to me to inform our community of things like a closure. We will continue to plan and prepare using the most recent information available to us. We will continue to rely on and comply with guidance from the Department of Health, the New York State Education Department, and our medical director. We will continue to be vi vigilant in our disinfecting protocols. We will continue to support all our families, especially those with the greatest of need, we will, as always, keep student safety at the forefront of all our actions. Thank you for your ongoing support. Thank you for your upcoming partnership with the district that will help us mitigate the widespread of COVID-19 in our community and in our district.